We, of course, led with the news yesterday that Barcelona players will pay 100% of their salaries to the non-playing staff and Lionel Messi coming out criticising the board. Uh, Response today from Bartomeu is saying the predicted revenue for this season was 1 billion euros and we were flying in February ahead of predictions. We will continue to be the biggest earning football club. All clubs have a drop in income right now and we are working quickly to act on that. Sid Lowe with us once again. Sid, this is a bit tone deaf, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely it is. And, and you know, you, you take the front page of, of, of any of the Catalan newspapers over the last four or five days and you get this really jarring juxtaposition of there's a financial crisis on the one side, what are the players going to do, what kind of pay cuts will there be, how will this be dealt with, and then on the same page. And in the summer we're going to go and sign Neymar or Lautaro Martinez or whoever it may be. And of course, this is something, by the way, and I think it really is worth pointing this out, that the players are aware of. And part of the conversations between club and, and players over the last few days involve the players effectively saying, all right, but if you're telling us that this is necessary, if you're telling us that the, the, the survival of the club is at stake, we don't want to be in a situation where in the summer, all of a sudden, all of this money is being thrown at a new signing. And, and as you say, even if the two things are compatible, even if there is a way that you need this money now, you need these pay cuts now, and you can still go into the market in the summer, to say it like this, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's very tone deaf. And let's welcome Ali Moreno into the show. Ali is a former player. If you're, if you're playing and you had your chairman coming out and saying this, it's an interesting juxtaposition, as Sid says. How would you react? You know, I wonder how a guy like Bartomeu actually gets to be president of a club like Barcelona. Because every time he opens his mouth or every time that he puts a statement out, you just have to ask the question, how is this guy in this position of power? A guy who clearly, tone deaf, I think it's, it's, it's the first thing that you can say. But then you can go on and, and talk about the fact that a couple of days ago, he was, he was painting a picture of financial walls for Barcelona. And now, two days later, he's saying, hey, 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 look. We got plenty of resources. We can go and get whoever we want to. And it's all seemed to be a response to whatever Lionel Messi has to say and whatever the player has to say. The one thing that I think Bartomeu and whoever is part of this board, I think is ignoring is that they cannot win and they will never win the PR battle, the public relations battle against the players. Because the players are the ones that the fans relate to. They're the ones that they want to be like. They're the ones that, that really set the, the example that said the point of reference for Barcelona. Nobody ever says, you know what I like to be in my life? I like to be like Bartomeu. No, they want to be like Lionel and Messi. And so <laughs> in you trying to win the public relations battle against the players and a divine creature in Barcelona like Lionel and Messi, who is God to Barcelona fans, then you not only are you going to lose, but you lose sight of the fact of who you are and what you really mean to this club. And you forget and lose sight of something that is very basic. Do your job. Do your job, stay, stay in your lane, do your part, help this club and provide this club with a platform from where the great players that they have available can do their job and win you the trophies that you want to win. And then by the way, Sid, I suppose you can look back to last summer and say, well, if you're all so powerful and you have all this money, why don't you bring Neymar in then? Why is it becoming an issue now this summer? Well, absolutely. And look, there is a reason why Barcelona were the first Spanish club to, to turn to these kind of measures. So far, I think it's four clubs that have said they, they're going to. But there's a reason they were first, and that's because their financial situation was the most precarious. Now, of course, we have to be fair to them and we have to say that nobody foresaw this crisis. Nobody foresaw a situation in which the club would literally stop for two weeks, in which the museum shut, the shops are shut. You can't buy a Barcelona kit online, at least not from the club. There's no games, there's no ticket revenue, there's no stadium generation of money during matches. All of that stuff is true. But it's still, we've only been in lockdown for a little over two weeks. It happened so fast because they were so much on the edge. And you're quite right. There was a reason why they didn't go to, to Neymar in the summer, or there were a number of reasons. And one of them was because fundamentally they couldn't really afford this. Now, you go back to 2015. Since then, Barcelona have spent a billion euros on signings. And I genuinely think that while this is perhaps debatable, you can go through the list of players, and I think it's something like 22, 23 players. There is not a single player in that list who has been an unqualified success for Barcelona. It's just extraordinary the amount of money they've wasted. Their two most expensive players of all time, 
One of them is on loan at Bayern Munich. The other, yeah, it's not their fault that he keeps getting injured, but he does keep getting injured, and he's done virtually nothing in the time that he's been at Barcelona, largely through no fault of his own. Barcelona, when they signed Neymar, one of the directors came out and said, well, of course, we're not just going to spend all this money, 222 million euros. It would be irresponsible if we did so, and we would have to leave. We would be forced out if we did that because it would be irresponsible. Within six months, they spent 300 million euros. That tells you part of the reason, not why this situation has been created, but why they were so ill-equipped to deal with this situation. So it brings up an interesting point regarding in the summer, if Barcelona go and spend all this money, Ali, this player then arrives in the locker room. Is there a little resentment there considering what the players have sacrificed and what those who work within the club who weren't playing have sacrificed as well? Well, it depends who that player is. Because if it is Neymar, then we're led to believe by the players that, hey, this is the guy that we wanted all along. Why haven't you been here? You're the guy who's going to take us to the next level. You're going to be the guy who's going to transition us from the Messi era to whatever is ahead for this club. What I would say to that player, whoever that player may be is, if I were representing him, is, hey, bud, at this point, I think it would be best if we took less money, all right? If we took... Not the best deal available to us, but we took less money and we in some ways show a good faith agreement with not necessarily Barcelona as a club, but with the players that you're going to deal with on a daily basis with your teammates. If you put out there that sort of olive branch and say, you know what, I'm not going to take the, the best market available or the best deal available in the market. I'm going to take a deal that is representative of my skill set, but I'm also mindful of what's going on in the world. That in itself would send a powerful message, and I think it would open the door of the locker room for you, whoever you are, as you walk into a place that you know is very difficult to perform in. Ali Moreno, thank you very much. Thanks to Sid Lowe as well. Extraordinary scenes, really, in Catalonia over the last 48 hours. The Transfer Talk, of course, continues. Go over to the website, click on Transfer Talk for all the latest news. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.